Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Hello, everyone. It's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel. Tap the notification bell. I'd appreciate it majorly. So I just uh, I really wanted to follow up on this uh, absolutely insane story that um, is not going away. You know, dude, this is so bad, man. So bad. And uh, this dude is totally, and many people along with him, many, are, he is selling us out so bad. And uh, it's not good, man. It's pretty, it's pretty pitiful. Trump's not going to make it to uh, 2020, I don't think. And if he does, he's going to lose. And he'll, uh, I'll get into it later, some other video. So, you know, the two dudes, Igor Fruman and Lev Parnas, I mean, there's just majorly interesting developments. You know, um, there was four people that, that are being indicted. Three of them were arrested. Two of them were Igor Fruman and Lev Parnas in Dulles Airport today, um, you know, outside of Washington, D.C. in Virginia. What's crazy, many crazy things. One is they literally had a one-way ticket, you know, out of the country. And um, according to the Southern District of New York, you know, the attorney, and I don't know if uh, Jeffrey Berman is the one who stated this, they, you know, they weren't even going to unseal this indictment on Thursday, but because they got tipped off that these two seem to be, you know, exiting the country abruptly, they were forced to, you know, and uh, and they were literally uh, those two were arrested in the in the airport moments before they were about to board their flight. That um, they booked the flight to Frankfurt, Germany, to connect with another flight. But it says the two were detained as they were about to board the flight with one way tickets. Manhattan U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Berman told told reporters Thursday they gave a press conference. I didn't watch it. So that's one thing. And there's two other dudes that were in the indictment, the exact charges. I'll get to them in a second. And uh, one was arrested in uh, was arrested in the Northern District of California, I believe. And the other one remains unarrested. Uh, and Andre Kukushkin has been arrested and is expected to appear in court Thursday, today, in the Northern District of California, according to Manhattan U.S. Attorney's Office. David Correa hasn't been uh, hasn't been arrested. All four citizens, all four are U.S. citizens. But in addition to that, Giuliani met with these two individuals moments, hours before they were arrested at Trump International Hotel in Washington D.C. He declined to comment to CNN for this report. So federal prosecutors were not intending to unseal the indictment against Giuliani, his associates, and two others Thursday, according to three U.S. officials, but had to change course when they learned of the defendant's impending departure. The two were detained as they were about to board a flight with one-way tickets. And um, so it says, the charges against the men suggest Giuliani's push on Ukraine and President Donald Trump's receptiveness to it had ties to an illegal effort to influence U.S. politics and policy using foreign funds. The indictment involves two people central to, central to the impe impeachment inquiry. That's uh, Fruman and, and Parnas. Continues, it also says that uh, General Attorney General William Barr, who visited Manhattan's U.S. Attorney's Office uh, Thursday, today, in what, was, in what officials said was a routine stop, was briefed on the investigation into Parnas and Fruman in February, after, after, uh, after he, right after he took office, right after he was confirmed. Which is pretty interesting, uh, you know, um, and he supported the prosecution, according to U.S. Uh, Justice Department officials. Um, you know, I don't know what to make of that exactly, whether or not he withheld that from the president or if the president was aware of that, you know, and um, I don't know. Anyways, overall, four men were indicted Thursday on two, count, two counts of conspiracy, one count of, of false statements to the Federal Election Commission, and one count of falsification of records. The four alleged in the indictment, uh, unsealed by New York federal prosecutors, to have conducted a scheme beginning in March 2018 to evade campaign finance laws. Fruman and Parnas appeared in, in court Thursday in Virginia where, where prosecutors told a judge they were concerned the two might attempt to flee. They haven't entered a plea. 
I guess they weren't forced to make a, enter a plea today. They will be held in detention in Virginia until they each secure a $1 million bond, a judge said, which I, I, I would assume they'll be posting. You know, I think they're wealthy persons, but I don't know. Along with Fruman and Parnas, Andre Kukushkin has been arrested and is expected to appear in, in court Thursday in, northern, in the Northern District of California, according to the Manhattan U.S. Attorney's Office. Fourth man, David Correa, hasn't been arrested. An attorney for Parnas and Fruman, to Kevin Downing, declined to comment on the indictment. An attorney for Kukushkin, Robert Finkel, did, uh, didn't appear to request for com- uh, didn't didn't respond to a request for comment. Kevin Downing is not the same as John Dowd, who was representing, I think, still is representing these two individuals as it relates to the House inquiries, the House Oversight Committee, the Intelligence Committee, and one other committee. You know, with regards to the impeachment inquiry and re- Ukraine and everything else. So I think John Dowd was, you know, hired for that purpose and was representing them. Or he was just in reports just of as of yesterday. Kevin Downing is a different attorney altogether. They don't work out of the same office. But it's, it, it appears that Kevin Downing was Paul Manafort's uh, attorney. I assume Kevin Downing is, is a criminal attorney because these are totally different matters. So one, John Dowd, the former, former attorney to President Trump, I think, in relation to the into into the um, you know the special counsel investigation, the Russia investigation, that's John Dowd. He's their attorney for you know one matter. Kevin Downing, Paul Manafort's former attorney on I guess criminal matters, is their attorney on on this. It's pretty crazy. So I mean, there's a ton here. Um, Parnas was Giuliani's fixer in Ukraine introducing him to current and former officials as far back as 2018. Starting in November 2018, Giuliani told CNN Parnas and Fruman introduced him to former and current Ukrainian officials who provided information that Giuliani claims is damaging to some of Trump's political enemies, including Biden. House Democrats have subpoenaed documents from Giuliani relating to those interactions. The request from Congress is the second set of subpoenas linking Giuliani and other Trump affiliates to Parnas. The first set, part of a lawsuit filed in federal court in Florida earlier this year, sought Parnas's financial records and included a, a request for any work he may have done on Giuliani's behalf. They gave hundreds of thousands in donations to Trump-allied Super PAC, according to Miami Herald. Fruman and Parnas, at, for, Fruman and Parnas asked a U.S. congressman who is not named in the indictment but appears to be former Rep. Pete Sessions to help get the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine fired at the same time that they were committing to raise tens of thousands of dollars for that congressman's re-election effort. The ambassador at the time, Marie Louise Yavanovich, was, was eventually recalled in May after earn, earning the ire of Trump and other conservatives. Yavanovich, Yavanovich, Yavanovich has become one of the central figures in the ongoing impeachment effort in the House and is expected to appear before lawmakers for a deposition Friday, tomorrow. They sought to raise a promise $20,000 for the congressman. As they did that, Fruman allegedly made a donation to the lawmaker in Parnas's, Parnas's name to skirt limits on individual donations in violation of campaign finance law. The indictment says the indictment also lays out how they donated $325,000 to a pro-Trump Super PAC, America First Action, around this same time through a limited liability co- company, Global Energy Producers, allegedly created for the purpose of masking the true source of their campaign contributions. That PAC, that PAC spent heavily in 2018 to sports sessions, over $3 million, but he, uh, he went on to lose his, his seat. America First Action told CNN in a statement that it has not used the donation and that it placed in, placed the contribution from global energy producers in a segregated bank account. On Thursday, Berman, the U.S. attorney in Manhattan, said the defendant's alleged conduct threatened the U.S. Dem- democratic process, protecting the integrity of our elections and protecting our elections from unlawful foreign influence are core functions of our campaign finance laws. At this, as this office has made clear, we will not hesitate to investigate or prosecute, prosecute those who engage in criminal conduct. That draws into question the integrity of our political process. 
Then there was a whole other scheme for a, man, a marijuana business, you know, to, to get marijuana retail licenses. Part of, the, part of the alleged scheme revolved around an effort to curry favor with politicians who could help them win licenses for a retail marijuana business they hoped to establish. The business venture and the ensuing lobbying effort was largely funded by a Russian national running afoul of campaign finance violations that prohibit political donations from foreigners, the indictment states. The Russian is not named but, but identified in court documents as a businessman. At one point, Kukushkin is quoted in the indictment discussing ways to hide the, fun, uh, the funder's Russian roots because of the current political paranoia about it. Parnas and Fruman, as well as... The two other defendants are said to have drafted a chart that outlined a multi-state license strategy, planning to uh, planning for one to two million dollar uh, one to two million dollar in dollars in political donations to federal and state committees that were backed by the Russian national. The foreign national of eventually made wire transfers totaling $1 million to Fruman and another unnamed individual last year, and the defendants used those funds to make donations to a number of political candidates in Nevada that they thought could help further their plans uh, for the marijuana business. It goes on to name every... I mean, this goes on and on. It, it names a, a congressman that basically Trump campaigned for. Through the, Though the candidates aren't named in the indictment, one appears to be former Nevada guber, uh uh, gubernatorial candidate Adam Laxant, Lexalt, excuse me, according to state campaign finance data that corresponds with information in the charging papers. Trump campaigned in Nevada on October 20th, 2018 for Lexalt, who was the Republican candidate for Nevada governor in the, in the race. Lexalt, Laxalt, lost. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. It really is. You know, and um, there's a number of different photos here with uh, that's Lev Parnoff at the White House, you know, and um, boasting about it on his Facebook page. This is, I mean, at some point, I believe this is probably taken down by now. This is all, this is all of them. This is Parnoff. That's uh, Fruman. I'm not sure who, who those individuals are. There's Giuliani and Parnoff. That's in uh, in the Trump International Hotel in Washington D.C. But not today. That's from 2018, I believe. Or no, I'm sorry, September 20th, 2019. So just so just you know, just um, a few weeks ago. And uh, but they were in the in that same hotel today. Out you know hours before they were arrested in Dulles Airport. And this is. Uh, you know, in uh, the Beverly, Beverly Hills somewhere, some hotel, I, I can't even remember the name of it, some event, and there's Don Jr. and Parnas and Freeman. And there's uh, Mike Huckabee, and uh, there's two individuals again, and the uh, chief the chief rabbi in Ukraine, in uh, Jerusalem. Not sure exactly what that's over, but, you know. It's kind of looking up, uh, you know, it's, it was kind of look. I was looking up how, how it is that uh, there they are. That's David Correa right there on the left, and that's uh, Igor Fruman. And this is at the White House, I believe. I don't know. It's July 4th, 2018. I'm not real sure. I was looking up how Mike Huckabee became governor of, uh, of Arkansas, uh, you know, after, after Clinton was. And um, it's interesting. It, you know, I don't need to go through it. But you, everybody knows my theory, you know. Dude, I... <laughs> That Trump and Hillary, you know, fixed the 2016 election and she lost on purpose. And that's my theory. And I like it. I think it's a good theory. It's a very good theory. So, you know, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Rising. Rising. Hill TV. It's got Giuliani on there. That, that show is an absolute joke. And uh, it just cracks me up. They got... You know, that's supposed to be what? I don't even know what it's supposed to be. I mean, I thought it was supposed to be, you know, covering the Democratic primary. They say, you know, that it's uh, they cover the populist on the right and the populist on the left, even though they trash. That's all they do is trash Elizabeth Warren every chance they can. Who's a populist, basically? You know, I don't even like that, that stupid term. But, you know, but they have Giuliani on here to basically allow him to, to you know, defend himself. 
but they're supposedly like Democrats, you know, crystal crystal ball is or whatever name is. It's it's a, it's a joke. It's so it's so it's so phony, and it just cracks me up that their most recent video, uh, you know, here is with Elizabeth Warren saying phony. You know, the remedy Warren a phony. And John Solomon was one of the individuals at the Hill. I mean, he was hired specifically, you know, to launch that. And he actually has left the Hill. He's become a page contributor over at Fox. I saw that last night on Hannity or the night before. But one of his duties that will remain is, you know, is is being a part of this this service. A humo I mean, he's completely 1,000% pro-Trump, but he's behind a service that supposedly is, is covering the Democratic primary. Such It's just total bullshit. Complete, and I've li I've was I'm watching that channel grow, and I'm seeing the you know the, the 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 subscribers grow, and I'm watching the comments. They're completely fake. It's totally fake. It just is, and it's just a there's a machine out there, a political machine who's making money off of this, who's making money off of you know these people completely selling us out. It's a, it's a disgrace. And, you know, there's plenty of, of YouTubers that are doing it too. And it's, uh, it's everywhere, whether on YouTube, on television, or they're part of the campaign, or they're part of, you know, a thousand different consultancies and, and, and on and on. And, they're, and you know, we're, these people are selling us out totally. And it's, a, it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. And that's the story there. That's the story there. Thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. I'll see you in the next video. Later, man.